Greetings to all of you. I want to talk about the upcoming new moon on November 1st and also talk more in depth about this powerful opposition between Mars and Pluto that we talked about at the time of the full moon on October 17th. If you remember at that time, Mars and Pluto were a part of that grand square with the sun and the full moon. And Mars was just moving into opposition with Pluto. It went into opposition within a five degree orb on October 20th. And we're going to be in this dance of the opposition between Mars and Pluto across the next few months. So it's important for us to understand more in depth the meaning of that and how we can work with that in the most conscious way possible. But let's start with exploring the energies of this new moon. And remember, it's coming at that powerful time of the ancient cross-quarter holiday in old Europe known as Samhain. It is this time when we're at the midpoint between the equinox and the upcoming solstice. And it's a powerful time when the veils between the worlds are thin, when we're really looking at issues around transformation, around here in the Northern Hemisphere, how we're moving into the dark of the year. And this is a time where we're really honoring these energies of transformation, of life, death, rebirth. So let's look at the chart in the context of that. You can see that at the time of this new moon, the sun and moon are at nine degrees of Scorpio. And that Scorpio is that energy of diving deep, of doing our inner work, of being in a time of transformation. It's significant that the meaning of that in the Sabian symbols is about how are we in interaction with each other? How are we in connection with each other? What is the nature of our relationships with each other? And at the time of this new moon, we now have Mars at 29 degrees of Cancer opposite Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And then they'll go exactly into opposition by degree and minute on November 3rd, but you can see they're already in a tight opposition. And part of this kite, we have a grand trine, grand water trine with Mars in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces, Mercury in Scorpio, and then this kite with the Mars-Pluto opposition. So this is really the critical aspect set of this new moon. And I think we need to dive deep into understanding that and how that is relating to this ongoing opposition that we'll be in with Mars and Pluto. In that it is a water trine, it is calling us to look at those deeper emotional aspects of ourselves. And I think with Mars at 29 degrees of Cancer, Remember that I see the 29th degree, I know it's often referred to as the anoretic degree, a degree of crisis, but I actually see the 29th degree as the shamanic degree. It's in between, it's moving from one sign to the next. It's guiding us again in how are we in a process of transition, transformation. And here the focal point of this kite being Mars, is how are we transforming how we're relating to that Mars energy? Remember, Mars is about our actions, how we express our personal will, how we are asserting ourselves, how we are interacting with others. And in this opposition with Pluto, Pluto is calling us into transformation of our systems and structures, Pluto and Capricorn, but calling us into a transformation of how we are acting and asserting our personal will and how we understand and work with that energy of Mars. And with Mars being in the sign of Cancer, 
It's calling us to look at how we're working with our will and our actions from a place of compassion, Cancer. And here it is also in a trine with Neptune, again, about our compassion, our capacity to open to those spiritual aspects of ourselves, our awareness of our oneness with all that is, and to have that be informing how we act. It's also in this grand trine with Mercury and Scorpio, how are we diving deep into our own reflections on our inner process, Scorpio, and looking at how the ways that we think and process our emotions affects our actions. So I really see this grand trine as supporting us in doing that deep exploration of our own emotions and how we're acting in relationship with that. Is it coming from compassion? Is it coming from that deeper spiritual part of ourselves? Or are we coming from reactivity and acting out from that reactivity, which is the shadow side of Pluto in opposition with Mars? Remember, when you have an opposition, some that can manifest as what we play out in relationship and what we tend to project onto others. And as I talked about in the last full moon video, when you have an opposition, the key is to come to center so that you're integrating those energies and bringing them into an integration and harmony with each other instead of being polarized. So it's important as we work with this Mars Pluto opposition to not play that out in terms of reactivity or projections onto others, but to integrate that energy of transformation in how we're looking and at our own actions, how we're taking responsibility for our own personal will. And are we coming from this deeper understanding of how we can be in compassion, in relationship with each other, examining our own actions and our own ways of expressing ourselves? Or are we acting from a place of being unconscious and being reactive? I think as we see this opposition move more fully into exact opposition in these early days of November, we're going to see the different ways that this plays out, both in terms of the conscious expression of it, in terms of more reflection, awareness, responsibility, and thoughtfulness in how many of us are acting and acting from compassion versus the shadow aspects that we'll also see with increasing reactivity and potentially abuse of power and projection onto others, leading to negative ways that we're interacting with each other from a place of conflict or undermining or being destructive with each other. I do see this Mars energy, it's in aspect with so much at the time of this new moon, not only being a part of this kite, but it's in a sextile with Uranus, again, calling us into truth, into clarity, into releasing old patterns with Mars to be in a more compassionate way of working with that Mars energy. Mars is also squaring Arizona, Hygieia. It's squaring Juno. Again, how are we in relationship? How are we moving into new, more healing ways of working with this Mars energy. And now as we look at some of the added Kuiper Belt objects and dwarf planets and how they come into play, it's significant in particular that Mars is in an out of sign square with Haumea. And Haumea is in a very important position now also conjunct this sun and new moon. So part of what I see with that energy of Haumea is how are we regenerating ourselves, taking new forms, new shape? Remember, 
how Maya, the goddess, the creation goddess of the ancient Hawaiian culture, had this ability to shape shift in order to be supporting the regeneration of her people and of the land. So again, this energy at the time of this opposition of Pluto and Mars is how are we shifting and moving into new expressions of Mars that are more regenerative, that are more compassionate, that are more in balance. At the time of this new moon, Ixion, Pholus, Quawar are all squaring the lunar nodes. And as I've talked about in previous videos, this is so much about, are we acting from narcissism, impulsivity, reactivity, Ixion, or are we healing and coming from a place of being in balance, right relationship, Quawar, being in harmony with each other and all that is. At the time of this new moon, the sun and moon will also be squaring Chericlo, that healing centaur, guiding us in how are we holding sacred space for each other? How are we, like Chericlo, being in compassion and holding that energy of presence with and for each other? The new moon is also in a trine with Saturn and this healing centaur Nisus. Again, there's a strong energy of healing in this new moon. How are we, Pisces, coming into compassion and giving that shape and form and being healing in how we interact with each other? And again, it's profound that on November 3rd, you'll, you see that now Mars is exactly opposite Pluto. Now, the next day on November 4th, Mars will move in to Leo. It will continue to be in a five to six degree orb in opposition with Pluto now through January 17th. It will be in an out of sign opposition from November 4th to November 19th. But then when Pluto moves fully into Aquarius on November 20th, then they will be in opposition with Pluto and Aquarius, Mars in Leo through January 5th. Then they'll, as Mars has gone retrograde, it will go back into Cancer. They'll still be in an out of sign opposition until January 17th. And then back again, briefly, in an opposition with Pluto and Aquarius, Mars and Leo, again, April to the beginning of May. But the point that is most important is that they will be in this opposition very strongly October 20th through January 17th. So we're in this few month period of time of Pluto calling Mars into transformation, calling the ways in which we express ourselves and our personal will into transformation. I think it's very significant that Mars in the sky is very high in the sky for much of the night. It's visible for most of the night and is high in the sky just before the time of sunrise. So Mars is very present with us in this time, guiding us in how we can transform how we relate to each other, how we act, how we express our personal will. And let's look at where this is in the stars to get a deeper sense of what this new moon energy is about and this transformation it's guiding us into. Here we see the new moon, the sun and moon in the sky between the stars of Virgo and the stars of Libra. Mars is between the stars of Gemini and Cancer now in that in-between space. 
And Pluto is in between the stars of Sagittarius and Capricornus. So coming back to the new moon, we have the new moon and Mars and Pluto that are so powerful in the time of this new moon, all in transitions between one constellation on the zodiac and another. And what does that mean if they're in these in-between spaces? You know, I do think it's significant when planets are in locations that speak to the energies they're bringing to us, like Mercury here between the scales of Libra, calling our ways of thinking and our deep reflections to be in balance. Venus here below the stars of Ophiuchus, the great healer, calling our relationships into balance. And both Venus and Mercury are here close to Antares. So this Antares, the star of deep transformation. So the energies of this new moon are very much about transformation and change. But I'd like to talk a little bit about what it means that the new moon, Mars, Pluto, are all between the stars of constellations on the zodiac. I've been in this deeper exploration with a, a group of us that are coming together. I'm working with astrologers and wisdom keepers from the Southern Hemisphere to try to explore more fully how we in the Northern Hemisphere can reintegrate the wisdom of the stars and of their meaning to us from the Southern Hemisphere. I think that's a part of what we need to reintegrate, to come into balance as we're moving into the age of Aquarius, is to reweave the wholeness of our sky and the wisdom that comes to us from the Southern Hemisphere that's different than our perspective and the lens through which we see the sky here in the Northern Hemisphere. One of the things that I find fascinating about some of the ancient cultures in the Southern Hemisphere, particularly the ancient Peruvians, but also the Australian Aborigines, defined the constellations primarily not based on where the stars are and what their configurations are, as we do in the Northern Hemisphere, but they looked at the meaning of the dark spaces between the stars. The ancient Peruvians in particular saw the dark spaces in the sky between the stars as images of living animals that were in silhouette, that were holding that energy, that life energy in the sky. For them, the stars were seen as more inanimate objects and often holding geometric shapes but the true animate, living, sentient energy was coming from the dark spaces between the stars. Think about that for a minute. I think it is reminding us of the wisdom of the sacred feminine, which is that awareness of the fertile void, the darkness from which life emerges. Remember, in very ancient cultures, black was the color of life. White was the color of death. Black was the color of the fertile soil, giving birth to the plants and the life that was nurturing to the people. White was the color of bones, of death. So I think it's interesting that some of the mystery and wisdom coming to us from the Southern Hemisphere may be that reminder of that sacred feminine wisdom of the fertile void, the fertile darkness. Darkness that is about that energy of creation and creativity. And I think as we look at this new moon and Mars and Pluto in these dark spaces between the stars of the constellations, it's telling us this is a shamanic time. This is a time 
where we can be in the fertile void. We can be in the in-between spaces. We can honor that this is a time of transition and transformation. And again, if you look at the placements of Mars and Pluto in the tropical zodiac being at the 29th degree, it's the shamanic degree. So we are in this very intense transformational time with this ongoing interaction between Pluto and Mars calling us to look at how we act, how we express ourselves, how we are working with our personal will, Mars. And remember that Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. So when we're integrating them, it's guiding us to integrate our personal will, Mars, with divine will, Pluto. Pluto is calling us to burn away those expressions of Mars that no longer serve our deeper selves and are out of balance in how we're relating to others and relating to life around us. I truly believe as we're moving into the age of Aquarius, we are needing to reclaim a different understanding of Mars. We're still caring from my perspective, a distorted sense of Mars coming out of the patriarchal paradigm and the out of balance ways that we worked the age of Aries. And I believe this Mars-Pluto opposition is calling our expression of Mars into a cauldron of transformation to allow it to emerge in a new way, in a way that is Mars as an expression of compassion, the capacity to be in right relationship, to guide us in how we act and integrate the new paradigms of the Aquarian age that are about mutuality, collaboration, cooperation, how we are in community with each other. You know from things that I've said in past videos that I don't work with these energies of these transits, of these charts, with the sense that they're deterministic or predictive of what may occur to us. I truly believe the energies of the stars and planets are trying to guide us in how we are working our process consciously and how we are either moving into collaboration and co-creation with the energies of the stars and planets, with the energies of cosmic consciousness, or how we are acting in a way disconnected from that and in a way that is about being discordant in our interaction with the consciousness of the sky and the earth, and therefore moving further and further out of balance. As I've said in recent videos, this is a karmic choice point for us as humanity. Are we going to come back into balance? Are we going to heal and transform to move into higher con consciousness? Or are we going to continue on a path of disconnection and destruction? And I believe this Mars-Pluto opposition is calling our attention to how we are working these energies of transition in this time. And are we reconfiguring who we are and how we express ourselves so that we are coming back into more balance in how we relate to each other and how we relate to the life around us? It is the imbalances with Mars that have led us into war, that have led us into violence, that lead us into projection and reactivity and disconnection from each other. And I truly believe this new moon and this ongoing Mars-Pluto opposition is saying, burn away those out of balance expressions of Mars, to come back into compassion, to come back into right relationship with the earth and sky and with each other.
This is a powerful time. And I'm very well aware that this exact opposition, this powerful Mars-Pluto energy is moving into full effect at the time of the U.S. election on November 5th. I very consciously choose not to step into the political polarization that is unfolding in more and more intense ways in this country and around the globe. But I really see this as a karmic choice point for the United States as well in terms of what is the path that we will be on. And I do believe that the Pluto return in the U.S. chart in the second house in Capricorn has been very much about what are our values? What is our sense of self as a country? What is our deeper purpose? And are we in alignment with that or are we out of balance with that? So I think this Mars-Pluto energy and this new moon are actively calling those of us here in the United States into our own accountability and our own responsibility to look at how we're acting. What are the decisions that we're making? And what values are we operating out of? And what are we choosing in terms of those we look to for leadership? And is it coming from a place of higher consciousness? Or is it coming from reactivity and hostility and division and destruction? Remember that Pluto at this 29th degree of Capricorn, the Sabian symbol means our need for spiritual wisdom at the highest level of leadership and collective affairs. What are the choices that we're each making individually and collectively? I think that is a profound theme not only here in the U.S., but in the world at this time. And again, it's ultimately not about politics. It's about consciousness. Remember that this opposition with Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn, opposite Mars at 29 degrees of Cancer, is how are we deconstructing the paradigms of the past? How are we opening to compassion? answer? How are we moving in new directions to be redefining how we express ourselves and work with that energy of Mars? Let's talk a little bit more about the Mars journey and the meaning of the Mars journey, because I think that's important for us to understand that larger context, to understand the meaning of this transformational energy of Pluto opposite Mars. Mars begins its journey in conjunction with the sun. And it is in, it, its orbit is a little bit over two years in its movement around the sun. It was last conjunct the sun, November of 2023. It is now moving towards its opposition with the sun. The time of Mars opposite the sun is when Mars is at its brightest. Mars in its journey moves through the sky and is visible in the night sky in before sunrise as it's moving towards its opposition with the sun. It is Mars's period of exploration, of discovery, of being on the hero's journey, of being on this separation from the sun to be in the experience of indiv individuation and self-exploration and self-expression. Mars then comes to its opposition with the sun and is at its brightest in the sky. And this is the time in the Mars cycle that is the time of transformation and transmutation. This is the time in the Mars cycle when Mars realizes, oh, this journey that I've been on, this hero's journey, is not a linear path of increasing individuation and self-expression. I've been on this journey of discovery 
in order to realize I'm still in connection with source opposite the sun. This journey is actually about how do I use my time of exploration and self-expression and discovery to discern my true gifts, to bring them back into connection with the community, into connection with source. Our journey with Mars is about our honoring our own unique gifts, our own unique self-expression to be of service to others, to remember that we are always in connection with source. Our Mars has gotten out of balance in the age of Aries and in this patriarchal period when we think that it's all about a journey of conquest and of separation, individuation. I'm out to conquer what I can to meet my own needs and to enhance my own ego. The true Mars journey at that time of Mars opposite the sun is the burning away of ego to come back into soul consciousness, to realize who we truly are and what this journey is really about and how we can use our gifts and our ways of acting and expressing ourselves to be of service to others and to be co-creating with cosmic consciousness, to be in right relationship with all that is. This is the time for us where we are called to transform our personal will and align our will with divine will, align our will with cosmic consciousness. When we do that, we have the capacity to co-create with the consciousness of the cosmos and manifest this new world that is based on the paradigms of the age of Aquarius, that is letting go of the paradigms of the past, that are about conquest, destruction, power over, control, into paradigms of collaboration, mutuality, justice, truth, respect for each other, compassion for each other, collaboration with each other. Using our gifts then to be of service to each other, of service to the community and in right relationship with each other and all of life. This is the transformation that we're in right now. And it's so profound that as we're moving in more fully into the age of Aquarius, as Pluto towards the end of November moves fully into Aquarius, as we're moving out of this time of the Kali Yuga in March of 2025, we have this capacity as humanity to move into these higher states of consciousness and transform our lives individually and collectively. I've talked in a, an earlier video about my view of this time of transition that we're in. I did that interview with Bibhu Dev Misra talking about the yuga cycle. I think that's important for us to understand this cycle of procession, this cycle of the ascending and descending periods of consciousness that we've gone through as humanity. But I truly believe, and this is part of what I'm writing about in the revisions of my book, Finding Our Center, I truly believe that at any point, in any time of the procession cycle, we can step off the wheel and be in that state of higher consciousness to be in that alignment with our soul consciousness and in right relationship co-creating with cosmic consciousness. At any point in this cycle, we can remember who we truly are 
and move into those higher states of consciousness and then be operating more out of that awareness that we are a fractal expression of cosmic consciousness. We are a soul self here to learn and grow, evolve, and be of service. I profoundly believe that the earth and sky are activating and supporting us as humanity in remembering that this is a profound time of transition on the planet when we have this capacity to make this evolutionary leap to transform the paradigms that we've been living out of for the last 5,000 years and to come back into balance, move into higher consciousness and co-create the new earth together. This Mars-Pluto opposition is calling our attention to how we are working this time of transition. And are we allowing our personal will and our ego to dissolve, to come back into soul consciousness, to then allow our own self-expression, Mars, to come from our alignment with our soul selves and with that way in which we can act out of compassion and act in ways that are of service to our community and are in alignment with cosmic consciousness, with the energies of the earth and sky. This new moon is saying this is a time of transformation and here is profound guidance for us in how all these energies are focused on Mars, Neptune, Mercury, Pluto, the sextile with Uranus. All three transpersonal planets are activating Mars, saying, clear away what no longer serves you, dissolve the ego consciousness, and open to soul consciousness. Pluto, transform, transmute this way of working with Mars energy so that it's coming out of that imbalanced expression of ego and back into right balance, right relationship with all that is. As I reflect more and more on this time that we're in, I'm deeply moved by the ways in which I feel the earth and sky are giving us messages, are guiding us to wake up, are showing us how we can transform to come back into balance, are guiding us in how we can move into higher consciousness so that we can co-create this new earth together. This is the time when we can be in that shamanic time of shape-shifting and activate these new ways of being if this is such a fertile time, it's an intense time, it's a stormy time, because we are seeing the polarization on the planet between those clinging to the old forms and the destruction of the patriarchal paradigms and that power over dynamic and those who are already activating and embodying the new Aquarian paradigms. As we're in the storminess of these times, let us keep our focus on the deeper meaning of this time and how we're working with our own consciousness and how we're allowing ourselves to be in this process of healing and transformation, to be moving into higher consciousness and into these higher expressions of our own actions, our own will to be in alignment with our soul consciousness and the consciousness of the cosmos. It is profound to me that when Mars moves fully into its opposition with the sun, that moment in the Mars journey that is about its being at its brightest and in that time of transmutation and transformation that's occurring in January of 2025, Mars will be at 26 degrees of Cancer. And the meaning of that Sabian symbol is a storm in a canyon. 
It is about our need to face a time of crisis, a time of transition from a philosophical and spiritual perspective. This is a karmic choice point for humanity. This is a time of crisis. This is a stormy time. But it is about our capacity to shapeshift, to transform who we are, to take an evolutionary leap into radically new ways of being. May we continue to support each other, energize each other, remind each other of who we are and what we're capable of so that we can transmute together this Mars energy to be in alignment, to let our will individually and collectively be back in alignment with divine will, with cosmic consciousness to transform our world and to move into this Aquarian age of community, collaboration, co-creation, and compassion. Blessed be, and blessings and love to all of you.